All right, guys, what's up? Uh, so it's about 8.15 here in North Carolina, and I just woke up, showered, ate, and got online and saw the trailer, second trailer for Batman v Superman, The Dawn of Justice. And I must admit, I'm a little, I'm disappointed with the trailer. And it's really sad because, you know, I, everyone knows me. I'm one of the biggest Superman fans out there. Uh, and I got a couple concerns about this this trailer. Uh, first off, the first main concern for me is that it's still a fucking Batman movie that Superman has just been thrown into. Uh, because it seems like all the attention is going on Batman. And like I have said before in the previous videos and, and rants, I have nothing against Batman, but he's had his film glory, and I was really hoping that he was going to be in the movie, but not the main, main, main focus, because actually they did come out and said that this is a sequel to Man of Steel. This is not a standalone movie. Uh, so I, I wasn't really all that convinced the other day when they had that little 50 second uh, teaser where Batman's tied up. Superman comes into that underground facility, rips off Batman's mask, and then looks at it. I I, I don't, didn't like that direction, and I'd heard some rumors that that could be a dream sequence, because after all, there is a toy coming out of that Batman called Dream Batman, uh, so I'm hoping that's the case, because I don't want Superman to be a bad guy, and that's what it was looking like. Um, now, if you haven't seen the trailer, uh, go ahead and stop this video and go and watch it. I don't want to spoil anything for you. So uh, I'll do a, a Chris Hardwick from Talking Dead. Three, two, one. All right, if you haven't stopped it, the rest is, uh, I, I spoiled it's because you didn't listen to me. All right, so anyway, the trailer starts off with Bruce Wayne coming into, I'm guessing he's, going, he's in Metropolis, and Clark Kent is interviewing him, and they're badgering back and forth, and uh, Clark is like, well, that, Gotham vigilante, you know, the Batman is, uh, he's out of control, uh, he thinks he's above the law, and then Bruce Wayne responds, and he's like, well, every time your so-called hero saves a cat out of a tree, the Daily Planet has to blow up the article, you know, and then he's like, I, I have a problem trusting, uh, anybody dressed like a clown, uh, a reference to the Joker, of course. But uh, I liked how that started because I thought it was cool to see Clark Kent actually reporting like he's supposed to. And it also puts to rest this big rumor that's been going around for a couple months now that Ben Affleck's Batman is not actually Bruce Wayne. You can kill that noise right now because if you watch the trailer, it tells you right at the beginning when he pulls up and gets out of that car, the guy standing next to Clark Kent, Clark like, he looks and goes, well, who is that? And the guy's like, well, where have you been? That's Bruce Wayne. So that is him. I don't care what all the Christian Bale fans and all of them have to say. It's Bruce Wayne. Deal with it. So after that, we get our first actual good look of Lex Luthor. Uh, now, the other rumor going around is he's Lex Luthor's son. He's not actually Lex Luthor, but his son would explain the long hair and why he looks like a teenager, kind of. Um, Michael Eisenberg, as Lex Luthor, I still am not 100% uh, you know, behind that, uh, and it's nothing against him, but I don't look at him as a villain. And if you watch this trailer, I don't really see him as a villain. In fact, he threw comedy in it, and I knew that's what they were going to go for. Lex Luthor is not a comedian. Uh, a lot of people had their problems with Gene Hackman, but the one thing you can say about Gene Hackman is he was kind of, he wasn't dark, dark, but he wasn't a comedian either. 
Uh, he did some comedic things, but in the end, he was a total villain. Kevin Spacey was a good villain. You know, um, Rosenbaum from uh, Smallville was a good villain. Michael Eisenberg, I'm still on the fence about. I'll have to see the movie, and then we'll see where it goes from there. But uh, he just doesn't strike me as a villain. So I'm hoping that maybe he's just so smart. See, you know, he's smarter than everybody, so maybe he's just being sarcastic. But I don't know. He just kind of – I'm not feeling him. Uh, then let's go ahead and just tell you what the trailer basically is. It's pretty much what we saw already. Just Batman is fighting Superman. And the only thing I liked about this trailer before – in the first trailer, uh, in the first trailer, Batman is you know, pretty much kicking Superman's ass, which pissed me off because, I mean – there's no way. Come on, guys. I mean, I'm not trying to be biased, but it's just not going to happen. Um, but basically, in this trailer, it gives me hope because Superman actually hits Batman in this trailer, and then he tells him, stay down. And, you know, of course, Batman's not going to stay down, but then there's a line that he says during the trailer. It's like, if I wanted to, you'd be dead already. In other words, Superman is telling Batman, I am not trying to kill you, but if I was, you'd be dead. So I, I think that the fight is going to be really incredible. I, I really think it's going to be one of the best, if not the best, superhero battles we've ever seen on the screen. So, so far, that part of the trailer was pretty cool. I like that. Um, Alfred, you hear him uh, give a line talking about... Um, you're going to go to war. We've already heard that part. But then the new one was, this is a fight that you cannot win. And then you hear Batman telling Alfred, like, that son of a bitch brought the fight to us. So after all that, we get toward the end of the trailer, and this is where it goes downhill for me. I'm not looking forward to this now. Um, I don't think this is a good idea because I, I only see two possibilities where this goes. All right, so at the end of the trailer, we see Michael, uh, uh, what's his name, Michael Shannon as Zod. We see his body wheeled in, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, while Batman and Superman are apparently fighting, here comes running, I mean, he literally, like, breaking down the side of a building. It looked like a cave troll, but it's doomsday. This is the direction I had heard rumors about, but I was like, well, no, maybe it's just rumors. No, it's real. Look at the trailer toward the end. Doomsday is in the fucking movie. Um, we don't even have Justice League yet. This is not Justice League. This is their setup to Justice League, and they've thrown the biggest villain DC has pretty much ever had into it. Doomsday. Really. Very nice move, Zack Snyder. You say you're a fan of Superman? And you, you want to treat these characters with respect and take your time telling the story. And you throw in the only guy in the DC Universe who has literally ever killed the Man of Steel. That's a really great move. That's like Avengers. Like if we were watching the very first one and instead of them fighting Loki, they threw Thanos into it the first film. You'd be like, wait, what the hell? What? No. Well, that's how I'm feeling about this movie. We don't even have the Justice League all together yet, and you're already throwing in the baddest villain, Doomsday. Then, the other thing that pisses me off is, at, in this trailer, not only do they throw Doomsday in, but all of a sudden, uh, he shoots like this heat vision out of his entire face, not his eyes, but his entire face, toward Batman. Batman's got a look of fear on his eye for the first time. I've never seen that before. But he like he knows he's a dead man. And then all of a sudden, here's Wonder Woman out of nowhere blocking it with her shield. And then Batman and Superman look at each other as like, is she with you? And he's like, I thought she was with you. So the other thing that pisses me off is as much as I was looking forward to seeing Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, it looks like DC and Zack Snyder are going to give us a 
cameo of Wonder Woman, because it looks like she's just going to show up toward the end of the movie to help fight Doomsday. Now, here's my problem with Doomsday being in this film. I understand they need a great villain to bring all these characters together, you know, because something's got to happen that brings and unites. I mean, it's called Dawn of Justice. They're going to kill fucking Superman. You watch. Because the only way that anything is going that the only thing I can see that brings all these characters together, because remember, we also are supposed to have Cyborg. There's a rumor of the Flash being in it. Uh, a, a Green Lantern might be. I mean, they, they Aquaman. We know Aquaman's in it. We've already seen Jason Momosa, Momosa in costume. We just haven't seen him in the trailers yet. They're, they're, these characters have to all come together, and the only thing I can think that's going to bring them all together is the death of Superman. And I think that's a bad idea um, because Man of Steel was a great film. And this one, I'm really hoping is really good. Snyder said that, you know, told the fans to trust him, and he's a fan of Superman himself, and he would never do the character wrong. Well, so far from this trailer, it looks like you're doing the character wrong. Your first mistake is you're letting Batman just whoop the shit out of him, and you're letting him take all the screen time in his sequel. Then, number two, is you... You really, you seem to, DC wants to catch Marvel so bad that they just won't stop and tell the story. They are just trying to cram all these characters into one movie. And what's going to happen is, and it's it's scary to think, but what's going to happen in my opinion is, it's going to become Mortal Kombat Annihilation. If you remember the first Mortal Kombat was not a great movie, but it was good. The second one sucked because they threw a stupid storyline, changed the characters around, you know, the actors that played them, and then they threw too many fucking characters into this thing. It got to the point where you're like, I, I just don't even care anymore. Just in this stupid thing. Notice that that movie did so bad they never made a Mortal Kombat 3. This movie... Is scaring me because we haven't even seen all the characters that are going to be in it, but so far they've revealed Doomsday. And that's my other big thing about this film, uh, about the trailer. And, and this goes for trailers, period. Now, so far, The Force Awakens has done it right. They get you hyped for the movie, but they don't reveal too much. How come every trailer these days has to ruin the film for you almost? How cool, awesome would it have been to go to this film? knowing Batman was going to fight Superman and Wonder Woman was in it, and there was something, some villain they were going to face, but you had no idea that it was Doomsday. So you're sitting there in the theater and you're watching this, oh, this movie kicks ass, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, holy shit, it's fucking Doomsday. Man, that would have been so fucking cool. Now, you're sitting here and you're watching the trailer and you're like, Oh my God, it's Doomsday. So now there's no excitement. You're going to go to this film and know, well, they're going to fight Doomsday. The trailers today don't keep anything a secret. They don't hide anything. They ruin it. And the perfect, another perfect example, even though I love the film myself, was Terminator Genesis. I think that film would have done so much better if the trailer had not revealed John Connor was a Terminator. I really think so. But once they revealed that, nobody, there was no anticipation anymore, no more excitement. There was nothing that you were like, well, I wonder what this, what's going to happen. You already knew. And that's how I feel this trailer for Batman v Superman is, is there's nothing left that you don't know. They have pretty much just took the movie, shrunk it in the three-minute trailer and said, okay, here it is. Now, if you want to see all the action and stuff, go see it. Um, so not a good move on your part, Mr. Snyder. Not good at all. Um, the only thing I'm very happy about is now we know Bruce Wayne is Bruce Wayne. He's not Robin pretending to be the new Batman or however that, you know, it, it basically has nothing to do with the Dark Knight trilogy. So that rumor about, you know, oh, maybe Christian Bale's going to come back as Batman, the older version. No, it's done. Ben Affleck is the new Batman. And from what I've seen in the trailers and from what I've seen picture wise, I think he's going to nail it. That's not my problem. My problem is this is Batman v Superman, 
and Superman should be the star of the film because it's supposed to be the sequel to Man of Steel now. That's what they officially came out and said. It is the official sequel to Man of Steel. It's not a standalone movie, and Batman looks like he's taking more time than the Man of Steel himself. And the one thing I, I really hate to say is that DC, you, you don't need to put this up because if you mess this film up, there's no recovering from this. Because no one will even attempt to make a Superman movie because they'll be afraid. Because you can't do it. You just can't. And you got people that are bitching about the Christopher Reeve. Oh, well, they were so campy. They were so cheesy. But then you got Brian Singer who makes Superman Returns, and now it's way too cheesy in the story, and they made him a, dr a deadbeat father. Now you've got a darker, edgier Superman for this generation. Man of Steel did great. Everybody seemed to like it. There were a few that didn't. But it's darker you know, more a Superman that fights, you know, somebody, you know, you can get behind this one. Don't fuck it up. Because if you mess this one up, he's done in films. There's just, there won't be no recovery. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. I like both Marvel and DC. There is no rule, and I don't know who came up with this, but there's no rule that says you have to like one or the other. Just like, as you see, I like Star Trek, but I also love Star Wars. Oh my God, I, I, I can't do that. No, there's no rule. So if you like them both, like them both. I love the Avengers. I love Superman. I love, I love superheroes. I like Spawn. I'm still dying to hear about a remake of Spawn. That would be awesome. You know, I like different things, but I'm going ahead and saying this right now. Marvel wins. You DC, just listen to me. Warner Brothers, if you watch videos, pay attention. You can't win this fight. Marvel's got too many movies ahead of you. They have told their stories through all their movies. You know, they take their time. They start. They started all the way with Iron Man to where they are now. They've got their next set of movies. You can't top that. They took the time. They told the story. They're telling the story. It's done. Stop. Just stop. Don't even try to compete. Be your own thing. Just do your thing and don't worry about what they're doing. Now, eventually, I really hate to say this, but I think Marvel will fizz out because if they're going to keep bringing you movies about characters. You're like, I don't care. I really don't. Like, I don't care about Doctor Strange. The only time I ever really knew about Doctor Strange is when he appeared in the Spider-Man cartoon or he... He, he, he did a team up with the Avengers in a comic book. I don't have any Doctor Strange comics. I never read Doctor Strange. I, I could personally care less about Doctor Strange. Could it be a good movie? It could, but I don't really care. It's not one I would, I'm going to die. Oh, I've got to go see this film when it comes out. I don't care. So Marvel, besides your main characters, you're going to run out of story. You're going to run out of ideas. I mean, let's just face it. You're not going to be able to get all of these actors together for one big war. Um, I, I really, I think Civil War looks good, but not the Civil War I'm used, I, I read about, so that's going to be interesting, we still haven't seen Spider-Man yet, so I like how they're keeping that a secret, uh, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't really know where their future goes, and, 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 you know, right now I'm more worried about Batman v Superman, it could do good and set up a great universe for these characters, it could bomb like hell, and destroy the DC uh, movie universe forever. And that includes Batman, because even though Affleck might do a very good job, maybe the best job of Batman, if this movie bonds, it gives him no credibility, nobody will even care about it, and, and that'll be the end of it. So in my personal opinion, this all it all rides on them. And if they've rushed this, if they haven't taken the time to tell a decent story, and if they just throw people in there like, oh, here they are, this is what fans wanted, you're going to fuck it up. That's my last thing I have to say about it. Uh, I thought I was going to wake up this morning and do a video like, oh my god, this is going to be the coolest movie. I, I really am scared for this film now. Um, Doomsday was a terrible choice. I, I don't think it's a good idea at all, and I could be wrong, and it could be really good. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the battle is going to be outstanding, but anybody that knows the Superman lore knows that probably nine out of ten times, if Doomsday is introduced in the film, Superman's going to die. 
and that's probably what's going to bring all these the Justice League together. And then they'll probably do a sequel where the return of Superman and DC don't fuck it up. 